The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision Local Programming, TV that's close to home. The 2011 county elections, what they mean for Suffolk, straight from County Legislator Tom Silney, right now on Meet the Leaders. Welcome to Cable Visions Meet the Leaders, the show that brings you to the heart of local government. I'm Patrick Halpin, sitting down today with Suffolk County Legislator Tom Selmy. Uh, Legislator Selmy, it's, it's great to have you on Meet the Leaders, and the first thing I have to do is to congratulate you on, on your election. Thank you so much. It was now, a great win. Now, you were re-elected to represent the people in the 10th Legislative District. What community is a part of that district? The 10th Le Legislative District consists of all of the hamlets of Islip, East Islip, Great River, Islip Terrace, uh, a little bit of Islandia, tiny little bit of Oakdale, some of Ronkonkoma on the Islip side, uh, and Bayshore. So what were the big, ele big election issues that you heard from people as you were out knocking on doors, uh, meeting folks at shopping centers, and, and doing all the things you do as you campaign across your district? Taxes, uh, jobs, trust in their elected officials, mm -hmm. uh, health care to some extent. And the county, one way or the other, has a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of influence on, on a variety of, of those issues, and, and, and we're, and we're going to talk about it. But in terms of election results, ISLIP was interesting. Um, you had a, uh, a where well, there's going to be a new county executive, and mm -hmm. uh, he was running against uh, Angie Carpenter, who comes from the town of Islip. Right. Uh, so there was a, a very competitive election in that route in that area mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in your case I you know, based on what I was following and obviously I didn't follow it as closely as you right, did right yeah, you were in pretty good shape uh, but there were some big upsets uh, for, for the on the town board and and, the, and and supervisor what do you attribute that to oh I think uh, the Republicans in, in the town of Islip worked very hard mm -hmm. uh, I think there was a lot of motivation for whatever reason to change things uh, at, at the town change the governance of the town. Uh, I think there was a lot of uh, concern about, um, uh, you know, sort of a, a level of, um, a level of arrogance mm -hmm. uh, in government in general. Uh, and uh, Tom Croce uh, was a great candidate, as, as, it, as was John Cochran and Anthony Semft. Right. Uh, and, um, you know, I think they brought a message to the voters that resonated a message of uh, integrity and, and ethics and uh, a message of fiscal conservatism and honesty that uh, people are really longing for uh, from their elected officials. All right. Well, let, let's, let's talk about the county, uh, which is your responsibility. Yep. Uh, the county legislature and, and the executive, uh, uh, Steve Levy, uh, we're really wrestling over this budget. It's, it's been a tough couple of years as as the county and every government has been buffeted by the uh, winds and the waves of, of this deep recession mm -hmm. and there are some big challenges uh, in this in this budget that in my opinion have yet to be resolved give me your take on things uh, you know there are huge challenges at every level of government really uh, and I think it comes down to we have to get back to a sense of uh, reality of where our country is at financially I mean, we can't continue to fund this huge behemoth of a system uh, that is rife with uh, uh, bureauc bureaucratic waste mm -hmm. uh, and ineffectiveness and inefficiency when we have declining revenue. And we have declining revenue for a number of reasons. Uh, certainly, uh, in, in our area specifically, people can't afford to live here anymore. People can't afford to do business anymore because the taxes are too high. Right. So our tax revenue is declining, and yet we continue to go back to that well for more taxes to try and fund but the system that keeps growing. But the county growing. hasn't done that for years, and and right. uh, had, and, and uh, you know the county uh, during flush economic times had developed a a pretty big rainy day fund, you know, just for this mm -hmm. purpose. So and let's let's talk specifically about the county. Sure. Well, year after year, what's happened is that the state has walked away from financial mm -hmm. obligations. Uh, that they have mandated or, you know, forced upon the taxpayers of Suffolk County. 
Uh, one good example, one recent example, is with regard to what's called safety net. So, uh, you know, the federal government says that you have to provide, uh, you know, welfare essentially, uh, public assistance mm -hmm. to folks for five years. Uh, there are several states, just a handful, 12 or 13 states in the country that offer uh, a more perpetual uh, form of public assistance. And New York State is the granddaddy of them all. We offer the most generous uh, uh, forms of public assistance uh, for the longest period of time. And uh, for years, the state uh, shared that responsibility uh, right. equally with the county. Uh, and this year they walked away from uh, almost half of their uh, end of the bargain, which is going to cost us another $30, $40 million uh, a year. And, it's, you know, when you have property taxes that amount to just $49 million a year, roughly, right. when you increase costs by $40 million just in that one aspect, and then you have pension costs rising as well at 30 to 40, health care costs rising as well, it becomes an equation that's unsustainable. So we're forced to cut and cut and cut or raise taxes. Uh, I'm against raising taxes, of course. I think you know, despite the fact that the county portion of people's taxes is very low compared to some of the other taxing jurisdictions, particularly the school districts, I think people are just tapped out. And we are forced to live with that reality uh, at the county level. So did you vote for the budget or vote against it? Well, as you know, uh, the county executive proposes a budget. Mm -hmm. uh, the legislature usually uh, proposes an, a, an amending resolution right. uh, that, um, that changes the budget in some ways. This year, uh, that resolution, which is referred to as the omnibus resolution because it's all-encompassing, uh, among other things, uh, laid off 88 people in, in the county uh, and uh, raised taxes. Now. Uh, the county executive's budget proposed laying off some 700 people. So I certainly give the legislators who sat on that working group credit for coming up with a way to fund uh, most of those positions that were cut, but it only funded those positions for six months. And so it leaves that uh, challenge to the incoming county executive to figure out how we're going to well, deal with that. Well, how's he going to deal forward. with it if it's the legislature is the only one that can raise revenue? If the county executive can propose it's the legislature that disposes. So did you vote against it because the cuts were not deep enough, or did you vote against it because they were laying off 88 people? I voted against the amendment uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, because we, we raised taxes by the maximum okay. allowable amount. That was amount. for what, the police district? That was in the police district. But what about the general fund, which didn't raise taxes? The general fund didn't raise taxes, but what happens is money finds its way between okay. funds one way or the other. Uh, sales tax gets transferred from one fund to another fund. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the fact that we took and laid off 88 people when we saved these six or 700 other jobs. But did you really, all, but did the legislature really save them or did they have to be laid off? Well, uh, they funded if, them. If, this is the problem. They yeah. funded them for six months. So they didn't save them. They only gave them a reprieve. Right. And, and the 88 jobs, my, my point was, why do you have to treat those 88 jobs differently? Why can't we fund those 88 jobs for the same six month period, which would have only cost us an additional three and a half million dollars, yeah. while we have a fifty million dollar reserve fund. Yeah. Why do we have to treat eighty eight employees differently than six or seven hundred others? Okay. It, it didn't make sense to me. Okay, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask you a hard question. Sure. If you were Steve Ballone, the new supervisor, mm -hmm. and you know that you've got a couple hundred people whose salaries are only paid for for six months. Mm -hmm. And the budget that was approved, not by you, but by others on the legislature, said we got to get all these givebacks from the unions. Mm -hmm. And they're under no obligation to give them. You can't force them to do it. Right. And you can't do it unilaterally. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you're Steve Ballone? All right. We'll we're talk gonna, about we're that. Gonna take a, we're going to take a break. Meet the leaders. We'll be back in just a minute. As a former county executive and lifelong resident, Pat Halpin knows what matters to Long Islanders. His accomplishments in economic development and environmental preservation have shown his commitment to his community. Pat's experience has taken him from Albany to Washington and Mineola to Riverhead, placing him on the forefront of our most important issues. As host of Cablevision's Meet the Leaders, Pat knows what questions to ask, so you get past the soundbite and get the real answers you deserve. Catch Meet the Leaders on Cablevision's local programming.
Do you need help coping with life challenges? Do you feel lost? Turn to Response of Suffolk County. You can call Response Hotline and speak with a telephone crisis counselor. Calls are confidential and the hotline is open 24-7. Online counseling is another safe option to talk about your struggles. We're here to help. When you need us most. Welcome back to Meet the Leaders here with Suffolk County Legislator Tom Selmy. Legislator Selmy, we we're talking about the county budget. Right. And I, you know, I want to kind of raise it up a little bit. Uh, you, uh, and, and it's been reported uh, that, the, that the budget that was approved still has some major issues that have to be addressed. Part of it is that right. hundreds of positions have only been funded for six months. Uh, and unfortunately, there are another 88 people who are actually losing their jobs mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. And, and for those people, the 88, and, and for the hundreds of people who, who could be laid off, that's a catastrophe. I mean, they're going to really feel it. It's going to change their lives. They could lose their cars. They could lose their houses. I mean, they're, right. for a lot of people, as you point out, are really struggling. Uh, that said, the county has to balance its budget, and the county executive is the chief budget officer, and he, it's his responsibility, or her, in this case, mm -hmm. uh, him, Tom, uh, Steve uh, Ballone, that you, they've got to take action during the year uh, to do everything they can to make sure that budget is balanced. Right. So what should the incoming county executive, Steve Ballone, do, knowing that, that this uh, budget has got some major deficiencies? Well, there's a, there's a number of things that, that he can do uh, to at least lay some groundwork. Right. Uh, number one, he can speak to the unions, okay? Explain the situation. Maybe there's some givebacks that, that How can How do you happen. get the unions to the table? Well, I, I think I Steve mean, Levy, uh, you know, had a, had a very sort of contentious relationship with the unions. Right. And everybody puts up walls. Sure. And they don't want to talk. Uh, Steve Ballone, I've met him once or twice. He seems to me to be a very friendly, cooperative kind of guy. Right. Uh, I fully expect that given the, the, the size of the challenges that we're facing, that that will force him to be even more cooperative than uh, he might otherwise but, but what, be. But what does, that, so, what does that mean, cooperative? And the reason why I, I, I want well, to talk words, about this, what, what's the strategy? What are the tactics? Look, let's assume for a second, and I've, I negotiated. You can, have a, you can have a very friendly, you, you can mm -hmm. agree to disagree, and, and you're right, it doesn't have to be so contentious and so personal. In fact, that, as you point out, becomes an impediment to getting to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. But in the end, there's got to be some give and take. Right. Well, it's, it's, and it's not, just the, it's not just the employees' unions that we have to deal with. Right. All right? We, we, he's got to cooperate with the state. He's got to explain to the governor and the state legislature that you can't just keep walking away from financial responsibilities. He's got to run county government in a way that's efficient so that we uh, can, can allow our economy to grow, uh, get rid of some of this regulation and, and, and this bureaucracy okay. that prevents jobs from being created and prevents the economy from growing, prevents businesses from growing and generating tax revenue. Uh, so, so that's the revenue side. And I think on the expense side, we have to completely reinvent government. I think we do way too much. I think the county executive has cut and cut and cut year after year after year across the board, which I think is the wrong way to do it because you've basically rendered every department in the county somewhat ineffective. Yeah, I agree. You end up hollowing out yeah, every department. We're sort department. of a jack of all trades and a right. master of none. So my opinion is that mm -hmm. we need to do a few things that are important really well, and then everything else we're just not going to be able to do anymore. And if you have to, uh, in my opinion, if you have to get rid of employees, uh, you do it gradually. You do it in targeted departments that we don't need anymore. You, you let attrition work for you, and right. you take it from there. So let's talk about a couple of the things that have to be addressed. Uh, the county nursing home. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the legislature only provided enough money to keep that going for six months. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you support that that should be something that's operated by some other entity? Absolutely. Okay, so that's a good area. Yeah. What about in, uh, in public safety? And by the way, that's significant. It's taken 20 years to get to this no, point. No, absolutely. And the yes. county could have saved uh, hundreds of millions of dollars had they done that years ago. Yep. Um, are there opportunities to do more civilianization of, uh, of police. And the reason why I ask is that you know, the reports in Newsday and elsewhere are that it's costing somewhere in the neighborhood of 125000 or more plus benefits, uh, which are considerable, to have a police officer patrolling in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. Yeah. How do you make the police department more efficient? In uh, that's a question for the police uh, department and for police officials. Uh, you may want to have William Bratton on your uh, on your show and talk to him about how, Why, is he gonna how be the he next, did it. Is he going to be the next police commissioner? I, I would be excited if he was the next police commissioner. <laughs> he lives out in Southampton. Well, uh, you know, uh, there there are clearly ways to do it, but that's up to people who understand the police business. Right. I don't propose to understand the police business. Uh, you know, I think civilianization of of patrolling. Is oh, you can't, really, you can't, you can't really can't do, do that. that. No. Um, is there more room for civilianization in at headquarters? Uh, I, quite frankly, I don't. I don't know. Uh, how do you deal with the expense of a police officer? Uh, yes, they're costly. Uh, you couldn't pay me enough to strap on a gun and, and protect our neighborhoods and be at you know put them put myself at the risk that our police officers put themselves at. But at the that end, said, yeah. Uh, you know, we've gone through arbitration after arbitration after arbitration right. with, with our contracts with our police unions. And I think when you have a, a more cooperative uh, county executive, sure. I think you might be able to come to some agreements that end up being less expensive than what we've seen in the past few years. But unfortunately, most of the expense related to police comes directly from the local taxpayers, sales tax and property tax. Right. So as those costs go up, you've got to figure out a way to make that department more efficient. And, uh, okay. and that's certainly going to be a big challenge for the next county executive. Sure. And let's face it, a lot of it has to do with retirement costs as well, both health care and, and pensions. And, and I've been saying for years yep. that something needs to change with regard to our pension system, otherwise we're going to go broke. So should public employees in Suffolk County uh, be paying a share of their health care costs as they do elsewhere? And Town of Babylon just announced uh, that uh, there the public employees agreed that they're going to be paying somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 percent of their health care costs. Mm -hmm. I think it's inevitable. Uh, I mean, and, and we've done it sort of gradually through the through the contract negotiation, the collective bargaining process, where uh, the unions have given back some in terms of uh, uh, deductible, higher deductibles and uh, prescription drugs and things like that. But I think inevitably, it ha you know, we have to do more. I, I think uh, you know, to some extent, you have to do this stuff prospectively because when you have agreements with employees that are existing, uh, to sort of change the game on them, I don't think. Uh, is fair, quite, quite frankly. But you got a $200 million deficit you're going to have to deal with next year. We're going to take a short break. Meet the leaders. We'll be back in just a minute. You can watch Meet the Leaders anytime you want. Go to Channel 502, select News and World, then Local On Demand, choose Long Island, and enjoy the show. Nassau County Firefighters Operation Wounded Warrior is an organization of first responders volunteering to provide comfort and aid to our wounded heroes and their families. Throughout the year, we raise funds and collect goods and then deliver them directly to our service members. Visit ncff-ow.com to find out how you can help.
Welcome back to Meet the Leaders here with Suffolk County Legislator Tom Selmy. Uh, Legislator Selmy, one of the things that I know burns you is that we've got uh, Suffolk County students uh, that are going to FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology, right. and other community colleges outside of Suffolk County. Mm -hmm. And uh, taxpayers were shocked to learn that they have to pay uh, their share of uh, the tuition. Right. Um, what is that all about? How does that happen? Well, years ago, uh, and this, this it manifests itself particularly with uh, the Fashion Institute of Technology, which is considered a community college, although it's not really a community college. Mm -hmm. So uh, New York State has a law that uh, requires that counties pay for the out-of-county tuition. Students from their county who go to other community colleges, we have to pay. Uh, this, the difference between what would be the resident tuition uh, in that county mm -hmm. and the non-resident tuition. So uh, our budget calls for something like $14 million in total for out-of-county tuition. Much of that goes to Nassau Community College because many of our residents go to Nassau Community College. About $5 million of it goes to Nassau Community mm -hmm. College uh, at a cost roughly of a little more than $2,000 per student. But much of it goes to the Fashion Institute of Technology. We pay roughly $7 million annually to the Fashion Institute of Technology to subsidize students who are receiving four-year degrees and master's degrees to the tune of roughly $10,000 per student. Wow. It's, it's absolutely insane. So years ago, FIT used to be uh, a true two-year community college. Mm -hmm. Over the years, it's changed into a four-year college and a, a six-year college. And while New York State used to subsidize the counties for their portion of that cost, that reimbursement, they walked away from that years ago. And so we're left holding this $7 million bag. Right. And I've been working very hard along with uh, Assemblywoman uh, uh, Schimmel, Michelle Schimmel from uh, North Hempstead, uh, who's a Democrat, along with Senator Owen Johnson uh, from, from our area. Uh, to try and get that law changed so that at the very worst we have to pay for only two years of that education. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're going there as a, to get an associate's degree, which I presume they still offer, mm -hmm. or at least uh, some version of it, okay, we'll, uh, we, we, we recognize that that's uh, a responsibility that we have. Uh, but to then be paying for uh, bachelor's and master's and all that, uh, that's, uh, that's a transfer of local tax dollars. Yeah. Uh, to FIT. Now it's a specialized school, we get that, but there are other specialized schools of course around. There are. Yeah. Of course there are. I mean, we, I, you know, there's any number of other schools that you could say, well, if you're going to if you're going to subsidize fashion education, right. graphic arts education, why not fa uh, subsidize nursing education or, you know, the variety of business education, the variety of other of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, not to mention that FIT's reserve fund is literally tens of millions of dollars. Uh, now, I believe the whole subsidy issue should go. I, I don't believe we should subsidize any students who go to other. If students from Suffolk County want to attend a community college, they should come to Suffolk Community College, which certainly is on par, if not at a higher level, than some of the other community colleges. Uh, we have great programs at Suffolk Community College. It's a great school, as you know. Uh, and so if students from Suffolk want to get the benefit of the lower cost education, uh, then they should come to Suffolk Community College. And if they want to go to Nassau Community College or FIT or any other community college for that matter, that's fine, but you're going to have to pay for it yourself. Yeah, and the, uh, the, one of the reasons why the county created the campus, the Grant Campus over in Brentwood, uh, was to address this issue of right. students from Western Suffolk going over to a community college in Nassau mm -hmm. because it was closer. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, there's a terrific campus that the county has invested a lot of money into. Uh, that provides a, a great educational experience. Um, but let's get back to this issue of, uh, of government efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, you and Legislator Stern have got a proposal to do a better job of assessing the impact of certain rules and regulations. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, I'm, you'd have to explain to me more. Uh, what, uh, what requir exactly requiring you... fiscal impact statements uh, for administrative regulations. There are a lot of regulations that come out of mm -hmm. uh, the health department and other things that have a real cost associated. And while the legislature right. looks at the cost of their proposed laws, very little gets done in terms of the regulation of government. And then you also have a, 
another uh, another thing called the Lean Initiative, where you're right. looking to get the really focus on those core right. areas of the government. Well, with regard to the rules and regulations, uh, you know, we we pass many laws that give our departments the authority yeah. to promulgate rules and regulations in order to enforce these laws. No one knows what these rules and regulations are. They don't come back before the legislature to approve. So we have all these rules out there, uh, and in some cases fees out there, and the ability to increase fees without legislative oversight, which I think are wrong, and I'm working hard to change that. I'm working hard to get those rules and regulations. In fact, I'll be filing a bill at the beginning of the year that requires our departments to publish all existing rules and regulations online so that everybody knows what we're dealing with. Yeah. And then moving forward, everything has to come back to the legislature for approval and then everything has to be published. So again, legislative oversight and transparency. We shouldn't have any rules or regulations that the legislature doesn't vet. Uh, that's do you the think, first Do you one. think that'll put the uh, curb the legislature's appetite for passing laws in areas that perhaps uh, you know, they ought to leave to some other jurisdiction like towns. Absolutely. And it needs to be curbed. I mean, we're, we're legislating this, we're legislating <laughs> that. Everybody's looking for something to do. When in reality, we have too much regulation as it is. Uh, we, we, can't, we can't enforce, you know, half of it. And uh, so we just keep throwing these things out there. And it makes, it makes absolutely no sense. And it's yeah. hurting business. Uh, now, with respect to the lean initiative, yeah. Uh, this is something that's been sort of near and dear to me for a couple of years. I talked about it during my campaign mm -hmm. in 2009. Uh, proposed to the existing county executive that we undertake this lean initiative. Uh, and it's, it's, I'm hopeful with our incoming uh, county executive, Steve Ballone, because uh, the company that I, that I first learned about lean from is a company called Daddario. Daddario is the world's largest manufacturer of guitar right. strings. They're based in Babylon. Uh, Steve Ballone knows them very, sure very does. well. You've got to wrap up. We've run out of time. Sure. Well, so what's, what's the overarching goal here of the Lean Initiative? The overarching goal with Lean is to make government more efficient. It yeah. looks at all of the processes in government uh, and all of the waste, and it gets rid of it. You know what? That has to be done. Yep. Uh, and you'll find that you'll be able to be more efficient, get more done, and do it. And, and, and given the economy and all that's going on, you just can't be throwing people at problems. I, I give you a lot of credit. Get jobs that. created faster. Get businesses yeah. running more efficiently. Okay. Tom Selmy, thanks right. so much for being here. My pleasure. A Republican, a conservative, yep. uh, who's going to be a very strong voice in this new legislature. Thank and of you, course, Pat. here at Meet the Leaders, we're always looking to hear from you. So you can email us at mtlli at cablevision.com. Your comments and questions are vital to our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Pat Helping, helping you meet your leaders.